Live, it's the Bison Football Show. Valley News Live and Gate City Bank present the Bison Football Show with head coach Chris Kleiman. Um, you know, to be the best of the best that uh, that's ever been there is, uh, you know, I hope people realize how special this is and, and uh, they don't start taking this thing for granted because uh, not many programs get the experience this. That's for sure. Only 12 teams in the history of Division I football have had a win streak reach 30 games. Better yet, it's only happened twice in the last 40 years. NDSU has won 30 straight overall, and this weekend broke the all-time Missouri Valley Conference record of 15 straight league wins. We welcome to the set head coach Chris Kleiman, and how special is this time for you? Oh, it's really special. Uh, hats off to our guys, our seniors and, and captains for being tremendous leaders this week. Uh, we challenged the guys on Monday to just win the next play, and uh, our guys went out and, and did that, and a great atmosphere and a great win for our program. How much is the win streak on the minds of the players, do you think? Do you think it's in the back of their mind, or do they not think about it at all? Well, we try to have them not think about it. I, I know they hear about it a lot, but uh, you've got to just go out and, and take the task at hand, and, and that's just to win that next play, and that's what we emphasize this week, and I credit our guys because... Uh, uh, I think Hardy tweeted last night, we won more plays than they did, yep. and uh, I was excited that that's the way the guys felt about it. Well, Southern Illinois was in here this weekend. It was homecoming. Let's break this game down, go through the first half, and Southern Illinois came in on a roll in this game. They were 5-1, and one, had not lost to an FCS team, and early on, teams kind of traded three and outs here. Yeah, everybody's kind of feeling each other out a little bit, and, and both good defenses coming up with big stops. Now third and one, they will stuff John Crockett here. The, the third and short has been tough this year. Yeah, and they ran a nice run blitz and, and got a stop, and uh, we just got to keep playing the field position game now. Now SIU was very active in the pass rush early. That's the product of a 3-4 defense sometimes. Boy, it sure is. They come from all different angles. They've got guys that really can rush the passer, and they covered well downfield and, and give those guys credit. Well, big play in the game early on. You got a takeaway. He forced the fumble here. Yeah, we're running a blitz. Jordan Champion does a great job of coming off uh, the blitz and, and getting a hand on the back. And then what a great play by Christian Dudzik. There's a, a senior captain making a big play and then Carlton getting the uh, fumble recovery. So you have it deep. You basically start in the red zone, but Southern Illinois did a nice job and uh, again got a sack here. Yeah, they, they brought uh, some pressure and uh, we weren't able to sustain the block and they make a, a sack. We were able to get points out of that turnover. You know, they forced a long field goal, but what a great kick here by Adam Keller. This is a 46-yarder. Yeah, great kick by Adam. He's kicking with a lot of confidence and uh, splits the uprights, and, and we're happy to jump out on top. And again, the defense gave you the ball back right away. Now we're in the second quarter here, and it's a third and six play. Carson, nice run. Yeah, they, we go to an empty formation, and they play man coverage, and Carson uh, tucks it and gets a big first down. You know, he doesn't get talked a lot about, but King Frazier's pretty good, isn't he? King Frazier's an exceptional football player and keeps getting better and better. And uh, he's, a, he's a downhill runner, but as you can see here, he can bounce it outside and, and uh, take the edge. Now Carson Wentz is going to finish this drive off with a really nice keeper right up the gut, basically untouched, only by Bonnet, really. Yeah, it was a really good uh, play, good call by Coach Polisek. And uh, uh, Carson's got a nose for the goal line and gets a big touchdown. Now it's 10 nothing. you got to be feeling pretty good at this point. Well, we are. We, we've got a nice start, and that's what we were looking for, but we knew this was going to be a four-quarter game. Their quarterback, Mark Iannotti, nice player. It's a great throw here. It was a great throw and catch, and I know they reviewed it, and he got his uh, a foot down and maybe even got two down. With great play by those guys. Michael Pruitt, he's something else, isn't he? Boy, he is a really good player, but this is a great throw and catch. We get a good hit on the quarterback. He puts it on the, on the money, and... Uh, Pruitt's a really good football player. You know, they talk about he's going to be playing on Sundays. I think there's no doubt about that. He's got the NFL body for sure. Now, our tight end, Andrew Bonnet, out in the flat here. Yeah, we've been running some power. We should throw the power pass and get Bonnet in space, and you don't know what's going to happen. He's going to run over here or jump over the top here. You know, key play early on here. It's only 10-7. You have a fourth and one right at about midfield, and you go for it. Yeah, we ran the quarterback sneak, and Carson kind of takes it off tackle and uh, gets a big first down, keeps him on when I'm going. You know, I think the big part of this drive, too, is you get a touchdown. Now you create some separation again at 17-7 yeah, here. Great job by the Rams up front, uh, clearing a hole for John, and we get in the end zone. 
You know, back to defense now uh, after the touchdown here. Pass defense has been fantastic this year. A very underrated part. Everyone knows the buys and stop the run, but this pass defense, there's nowhere to go here. It's been it's been really good. We've been really pleased with our linebackers and secondary. We've been playing a, a lot more man coverage, which uh, makes some tighter windows to throw it, and our guys have been playing well. You get the ball back here. Uh, Carson does throw an interception here, but it almost turns into a punt, really. Yeah, we take a shot, and, and we had to take some shots vertically to try to get them off of us in the run game. So, uh, yeah, it ends up just flipping the field. I thought the key part of the first half, uh, also defensively, they were getting a few yards in the run game, but no big plays. No, they were doing a nice job changing up uh, some of their plays and, and uh, give those guys credit, but we got the stops when we had to have them. You know, after the interception, they were trying to get the momentum. I thought this was key. They get a, a completion here, but you forced a punt. They didn't get any points after the turnover. Yeah, that was really important right before half to keep our momentum and keep that uh, uh, two-score lead. Well, here we are at halftime now. It's 17-7. to NDSU leads Southern Illinois. It's a dogfight early on here in a Valley game. Wentz, uh, just one completion in the first half. Didn't have to throw it much, though. Crockett was getting the job done on the ground. 133 yards of total offense. NDSU, one of six on third down. Here on the Gate City Bank hot seat, Christian Dudzik. Tell us your hometown and the best thing about it. Omaha, Nebraska. Um, it's just a sports crazy town. Uh, the Husker football is huge there, and then the College Road Series in the summer, it's pretty good all year round. Who's the loudest member of the team? It's a tie between John Crockett and Demetrius Gray, a.k.a. Solo, which is his stage name. Yeah, if you have other names, yeah, that's, pr that's pretty good uh, indication. <laughs> Favorite way to relax at practice without getting caught? I don't like to relax at all. Um, I like to bring the energy throughout practice, especially at the end. When guys are tired, you know, it's necessary so that we can get better. Leader, would you rather have it 100 degrees or 10 below zero? Probably 100 degrees. Favorite kind of music? Uh, I like instrumentals a lot, but uh, anything that's upbeat, has a good beat, I like those. What annoys you most about another person? What's your pet peeve? Probably just laziness. Uh, people without any sort of ambition. Um, I'm a big ambition guy, so if you just have no drive, I don't like to be around you. What is the worst part of your personality? Probably my pride. Sometimes I've been trying to work on that a lot, but, uh, you know, it's helped me in some cases, especially in football. You know, I will never give up because I have a lot of pride, so it helps me and hurts me. What do you like most about Coach Kleiman? He really appreciates effort and guys that commit. Um, he's been that way since he's coached me my freshman year, so he's a consistent guy, too. Describe the feeling during the tunnel walk. It's electric, and your hair stands up on the back of your neck. Um, just when those fireworks go off and the crowd's going crazy, it's unlike anything else, and I'm really going to miss it when I have to leave here. Well, Coach, how did you feel at halftime? We felt good. Uh, you know, having a two-score lead was important, but we knew we could get better. We knew we could play a little bit better on offense and be able to run the football a little bit better. We knew we had a shot at a big play. We were going to take it. And then defensively, we just told them we could not give them a big play. Let's break down the second half. It was a great performance by the Bison in a big ball game in the Missouri Valley Conference, no doubt. After a Bison punt, the Bison got the ball. They, they deferred to the second half, got the ball, had to punt, and they started to move the ball a little bit here. Yeah, they made a great adjustment uh, at halftime and got us in an empty set and, and found some small holes and were able to move the football against us to get a field goal. Now this field goal kicker, I mean, look at this thing. It's a 44-yarder. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it uh, clears the net almost. See, he's got a tremendous leg. Yeah, that would have been good from 60. So it's 17-10. It's a one-possession game right now, but Chase Morlock starts to make some plays. Boy, he does. Once again, great call by Coach Palasek. Good job lead blocking there by Schuler, and uh, Chase makes a big play. You know, John Crockett's not all about the running. He has good hands, so he can catch it out of the backfield. Boy, he sure can. And, and we've got to be able to utilize our backs uh, in the passing game as well as the running game. And, and John makes a big play. Carson does a good job stepping up in the pocket. Now, this is a John Crockett play that will grab NFL attention. I mean, catches like this, when a running back can catch a ball like this, this is very impressive. Yeah, and a great throw. Carson's uh, almost on his back, and he throws it. And, and great catch by John. Gets us into uh, the red zone. Now, second and eight from the nine. It's a lob pass to the tight end. Carson scrambles around here a little bit. Results in six. What a great play. Just an unbelievable throw and catch. Great job by Lucas getting the foot down. Uh, unbelievable play. 
He literally dropped that in a bucket. Didn't Boy, he? That's he, a hard throw. He did. <laughs> no running room for Southern Illinois at this point in the game. Yeah, now we're starting to, to do a better job in the run game, keeping our gaps. And uh, obviously, we get a strip there. We just don't get the ball. But we're playing much better with a lot of emotion on defense. The guys really had a lot of emotion in the second half, I thought, on all phases, up front and everything well, defensively. Yeah, they sure did. Oh, Nate Tangway almost has an interception here, <laughs> and then they knock it away. But uh, good job recognizing the screen by Nate. Now, Malcolm Agnew, uh, their, their running back, uh, solid player. He's a transfer from Oregon State. He, he did have some success. This was a, a nice run here, and they also a fourth and one play coming up where they busted a big one. Yeah, no, he's a really good running back, and, and they've got enough weapons that they can throw it and run it. Now, he missed this one. It was a long one, but it was wide right, uh, so that was big to keep him off the board. That was really big. Game-breaking play, uh, great throw, catch. This is just an outstanding play. Good to see this from Trevor Gebhardt, what, too. What a great throw by Carson and a, and a great play by Trevor. There's a, uh, a, Trevor's a playmaker, and he's a great leader for our team and so excited for Trevor. He'll make a lot of plays as, as this season goes forward. I was really happy for him. Now it's 31-10. to 10. Now it's a fourth and one play. Obviously, they're not going to punt, so they go for it. And, and they bust a big one here. Yeah, we just missed the tackle. Uh, Mike kind of overruns it a little bit, but then what a great job by uh, Christian running him down and uh, preventing a touchdown, and obviously they don't score on the drive. Yeah, obviously the defense was upset about that, and they just teed off from there. Here's two sacks in a row. Yeah, really good calls by uh, Coach Entz getting the pressure, and we get a good sack and force him into a fourth down. How about Greg Menard, a freshman defensive end? He gets a sack here. He's a tenacious player. He always stays after the quarterback, plays extremely hard. Coach Kane's got him going, and, and really happy for Greg. Big play on a fourth down. Much like Iowa State, Chase Morlock seals the game away with one of his patented 48-plus, uh, 50-yard runs here. Yeah, it was uh, our, our offensive line's really pushing the pile now, and then uh, Chase finds a crease, and Chase can really run. And the route's on. It's 38 to 10 right now. And I wanted to talk a little bit more also about Jordan Champion. Again, really supports the run. He's a physical corner. We're going to see a play from him right here. Yeah, Champ's playing a multitude of positions. He's playing some nickel. He's playing some corner. He hits the big tight end and push him back. And then I like to see all those green jerseys getting the football. A physical play. I mean, that Michael Pruitt's a big guy. And Champ uh, didn't back down at all no, there. He is a big man. John Crockett, uh, 29 yards. You start to really salt it away with some big runs here. Yeah, we're, we're really doing a great job controlling the line of scrimmage. The wide receivers are blocked and exceptionally well downfield, and our backs are running hard. An impressive, impressive win for NDSU. Their 30th straight, 38-10 over a very good Southern Illinois team. NDSU ended up with 426 yards of total offense, well over 200 in the rush game. Southern Illinois, 5 of 16 on third down. Another great game from Colton Eagle. Let's hear what the players had to say after the game. I think the main thing that we wanted to have, you know, coming out in the game was energy. We felt a little flat last week, and um, so, you know, we just practiced that way, and, and we took it one play at a time. That was the emphasis, too, is just one play at a time and then move on to the next, and, um, you know, we practiced that way, and it showed today. Um, it's, definitely, it's something we're going to practice, the scramble drill. Um, just kind of broken play, running around, and Carson definitely, I mean, you saw it last week when he threw one to RJ across the field, just planted and chucked one across the field. Um, you're never dead with him, like Trevor said. So you just kind of always keep playing to the whistle. And he's going to put the ball on you if you're open and see what happens. I think it started with the preparation. I think we changed a couple things this week. Uh, you know, seniors kind of taking a bigger role in, and, and coaching some guys. And then, yeah, just being in the atmosphere at home kind of helps you uh, to, to just be more excited for warm-ups and stuff. Like, Western's a tough place to play because it's a tough atmosphere. And then long bus rides there. And so to be back at home was a huge advantage for us. Great comments by the players, as always. Time for our Nodak Mutual Insurance Player of the Game. Wide receiver Trevor Gebhardt made the game clinching play versus Southern Illinois, but Trevor does so much more. Trevor's one of the best blocking receivers, and he's a senior that leads by example, never complains, and when he gets his chance to step into the spotlight, he delivers. Gebhardt is a great teammate, making him a big part of this winning streak. You, you do what you got to do to help the team, and uh, if you're put in a spot to make a big play, you go and make it. And if you're put in a spot to block the backside safety on a run play uh, so we can spring at 60 yards, you, you get put in that position and you make that play as well. Uh, so plays are made by this team all over the place that might not be seen as necessarily a big play. Uh, but when we see it on tape, we know it as a group, and we rally off those a lot. He's got to be a pleasure to coach, huh, Trevor Gebhardt? Oh, he's awesome to coach. He's a complete football player. You know, mm -hmm. he... 
He proved yesterday that he can get vertical and make a big catch, but he's right. He makes all the critical blocks for us. He makes the third down catch, and he got the big play. And uh, we always say big-time players make big plays in big games, and, and Trevor's a big-time player. Yes. Now, uh, I wanted to talk about the running game today, Coach. John Crockett's off to a great start to the season. He has 663 yards, but I think the most impressive part of this is everyone stacking the box, and he's still able to get some run. That's the offensive line doing some work, but John also making plays, too. Yeah, John's doing a tremendous job not getting tackled by the first guy, and that's what we always talk about. No one man brings you down, John, and uh, you're right. Give credit to the offensive line and the tight ends uh, for blocking, and, and John's uh, a man on a mission. He's uh, going to have a great senior year, and he's uh, on to, off to a great start. No doubt. Now let's go to the defensive side of the ball, and I think uh, something that maybe gets overlooked a little bit. Everyone knows the buys and stop the run. The, the rushing stats are terrific, but I think the pass defense with, with Champion and C.J. Smith is, is fantastic. Yeah, and we've really tightened down our coverage this year. We've done a tremendous job. Coach Kleinerman's done a great job of getting those guys in the right position to make plays, and then it always helps because we get a pass rush, and if you can get a pass rush with those guys up front, it makes it so much easier to cover, and so it's a it's a total team defensive effort. Only 148 yards passing per game given up by the Bison this year. Unbelievable. Only one passing touchdown, and that was this weekend, Michael Pruitt, mm -hmm. who's an NFL-type player. Now, kick coverage, I think, has been really good. Talk about that a little bit. How do you figure out who's going to be on the, the kick coverage team and how important part of the game is this? Well, our kick coverage team, Coach Gazer does a tremendous job of, with the scheme and we do a lot of competition drills to see who's the best of getting off a block, to see who's best of avoiding a block, as well as making a play when you get down. You look at guys like Nick DeLuca and MJ Stump and Zach Colvin, Chris Board, just to name a few that are making such unbelievable plays down there. There's Bo Likas making a play. Um, we emphasize it a lot, we talk about it, we do a lot of drills for it, and it's been a, a great weapon for us. Keep that field position. Only 18.7 yards per kick return so far. The Bison have not given up a kick uh, for a touchdown since last year at Indiana State. Certainly not this year. Very, very impressive. Coming up in our feature story, we're going to talk about why the Bison are so good in the fourth quarter. Of course, it's Jim Cramer, it's that weight room, it's a process, and we're going to dive into it. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. The Bison own the fourth quarter. It's like clockwork every week. The opponent is sweating, cramping up, fading off into the sunset. Meanwhile, the Bison are getting stronger. It all starts in the weight room. Strength coach Jim Kramer is making a name for himself as one of the best in the business. In this week's Olaf Anderson Construction Feature Story, we dive into the mind of Jim Kramer. Glutes down, up, knees in, down, up. After nine Down. years with NDSU, the Up. reputation of strength and conditioning Down. coach Jim Kramer Up. is well established. I just listen to what I said. I don't need an explanation. He demands respect and hard work, and in return, he gives his athletes everything he has. It's not just about the success that we can have here and what we can do here, but this is stuff you're going to take, uh, take with you later in life. With over two decades of experience working with athletes, Coach Kramer has seen a lot of lifting fads come and go. But the one he says makes the most difference, both in and out of the weight room, is teamwork. Do it. Good. Last one. Work it. Do it. Come on. Come on. Good. All right. I think that makes that more rewarding and beneficial for that athlete, just feeling better when they're coming out of here versus going to one-on-one -on -one training session. It's no coincidence the Bison run as one herd and mean what they say when they say they play for the guy next to them. It's a frame of mind that's instilled early on in their career. Let's go. Finish strong. Finish strong. Help each other out. Work together. Till it becomes a way of life. There's no one superstar. There's no one person that really... It's, a, it's a, bunch, a group of people working together from players to coaches, and that was, that's what makes a program. For the Bison Football Show, I'm Beth Wool. Well, how big of a part of the success is Jim Kramer and that weight room and that whole process? Well, he's, he's the most valuable guy uh, on our team. I, I, our coaches would tell you that. Our players would tell you that. Uh, what he does with those guys. And the piece they showed was with all the freshmen that are redshirting. Mm -hmm. So those guys are with Jim more than they are with us as coaches. So he's such of a valuable piece for our football program. And he's the constant. You know, when we had some coaching changes, Jim stayed. And yep. um, our kids feel so comfortable with him. They trust him. And, and uh, he's invaluable to us. Yep, that's a great point. In this week's Peterson Farm Seed Future Crop of Bison, NDSU has done it again. They've found themselves a diamond in the rough from their own backyard. 
Remember this name, folks. Levi Jordheim of Dickinson High came in as a preferred walk-on, and in his redshirt year is more than turning heads. You already hear comparisons to Travis Beck, which is just fine with Levi. I mean, you want to be out there, but then you realize that these guys have put in so much work and so much effort, and uh, you got to kind of earn that spot and earn that respect from those guys. I sure got a long ways to go, but I, I, I look up to Travis, and I just... I hope I can be as good as him someday. The way he plays is just, it's just awesome. He just, he plays real hard and he's real smart and he knows the defense and that's what I just hope to be. Well, that's pretty good comments right there and Levi has a future, doesn't he? He definitely does and, and our scout team, both sides of the ball have been so good for us and so tremendous in our success and uh, uh, Levi's a guy that we preferred walking, similar to like a Brian Schatz that yeah. uh, uh, he'll have his time in the spring to show what he can do, but we're really excited about his progress. Uh, ask Coach Palasek, don't run at Levi in, in, <laughs> in all the, uh, the practice film because uh, he's a really good football player. That's great, and he's from Dickinson, North Dakota as well, right here in the backyard. Well, we're going to talk about the Indiana State Sycamores, the last team to beat the Bison. We'll preview it next. Well, Coach, Indiana State's coming in. Uh, they had a 1-11 and year last year, but they're the last team to win in Fargo two years ago. They beat the Bison, so this is an interesting game, and they're playing well right now. Yeah, they're playing really well. They beat Northern Iowa and, and probably should have beaten Illinois State uh, yep. yesterday. They are playing with a lot of confidence. Uh, their quarterback's playing exceptional well, and they're playing really good defense. So uh, it'll be a typical four-quarter battle in the Missouri Valley. You think the guys are motivated for this one, too? They're motivated for every game, but this one, you know, Kyle mentioned it to me after the game on the radio yesterday. Okay, they, they beat us the last time. They know that. Well, they had a lot of young kids that came yeah. into the Fargo Dome and, and won in, in 2012. So a lot of those kids are coming back here for the second time. They're not going to be intimidated, so we've got to have a great crowd, and uh, our guys will be ready to play. All right, we'll see Bison Nation out at the Fargo Dome again this week. It's ESPN Game Plan, ESPN 3, also statewide NBC coverage. We'll have you covered on the media side, and the Bison will put out a great game. It'll be fun going for 31 in a row. Unbelievable run. Enjoy it, everyone.